What is up guys, it's your boy Raven here today with another deck uh, tag. Today I'm going to show you Malamar spread deck for uh, standard. And of course you can say, oh Raven, but you know, we all care about rotation right now. But don't worry, you'll hear my video uh, on the topic of rotation tomorrow on Saturday. Don't worry about that. But here today we're doing a Malamar spread deck. Uh, so I'm going to show you the deck, then we're going to go play a few games and we're going to see how the deck performs. I've seen the deck uh, perform really, really well, but let's go. Let's go card by card and let's see what's inside. So, so we start with one Oranguru. Why Oranguru? Well, for the draw power, right? Then we have to say goodbye to the good old nice Oranguru. So we have one Oranguru for excuse me for the draws uh, with instruct. Then we have one Onyx. Why one Onyx? Well, the Land Crush actually can one hit KO a Picarom, so we really want to have at least an option if we're going to face Electric type deck. Jolteon, uh, Picarom, one of those. Definitely want to have uh, options. We want to leave the options open uh, in those matchups. Then, you know, since it's a spread deck, we have a Tapu Coco with a flying flip. Amazing card. Again, another card that we're saying goodbye to, but. Amazing, amazing card. So two copies of a Flying Flip Coco. Then we have a line of four Inkays and three Malamars. Malamars for the attack and also for amazing, amazing ability. Then we have one more shadow that we all know, love and hate for the Let Loose ability. So uh, our opponent will shuffle their hand and draw full cards. We as well and we also can play a supporter after after that. Then we have one Necrozma GX with Lights Ant that prevents uh, any damage done by um, Coralus. <clears throat> by Coralus Pokemon and also Prismatic Burst. Uh, right, great attack and Black Ridge GX. Fantastic, fantastic GX for uh, the spread damage. Like, this is what we want to use from uh, this card, right? So it's 100 on H and everyone GX or EX uh, on opponent's bench or an active. Then we have Tapulele for the supporters that we need. So Tapulele, again, another card that we're saying goodbye to uh, is here. So let's go down to the trainers because uh, you can see like the trainers are uh, a bit more consistent than in uh, other decks I, I played. So we have three Acrobikes. So I want to discard the energy and this is the way to do it and also draw a card. Fantastic, fantastic card, Acrobike. Then we have four Mysterious Treasures, three nest balls and to rescue stretchers to get back what we uh, gonna get knocked out then four ultra balls and one outer of the moon why only one well it's because we're playing three shrines of punishment for additional damage on those gx's on our opponent's bench or active slot then we have four cynthia's two erica's hospitalities for the draws three guzmas three lilies and one Tate and Liza. Why Tate and Liza? Again, it's, a su it's such a versatile card, you know, flexible card. You can choose whether you want to shuffle your hand and play more uh, and get those five cards, or you want to switch your active with your uh, benched Pokemon. And then we go to the energy, which is 13. I know 13 sounds a little bit high, but trust me, it's all you need in this deck. Like, I tried 14, did not work as well as 13. I don't know why. <laughs> I think the game just registers it differently. But the consistency was there with the 13 energy. So we have 4 DCE for those, you know, slots on Onyx, Oranguru, Tapu Koko, or Necrozma. But we also have 9 Psychic type energy. So we can actually, actually, actually uh, get back the energy and place it super fast. So this is the deck. That's how it runs. You know, you have the deck list down there below. You can copy and paste it and check it out yourself. But let's go and let's play uh, the games, right? So let's go and let's see how the deck actually performs, how the deck really, really works with the Malamar spread deck. Again, this is the deck that had its time, you know, it had a few uh, tournament successes, either on a small scale with, you know, challenges or cups. Uh, and I believe in February or I think beginnings of February, when the team up was starting to be legal, uh, it had a nice top 64 place also in, in, in one of the special events or regionals. I don't remember now uh, the correct you know name of the city it was held or it was a special event or um, anything else, but definitely I remember that I recall there was something like that. Would you like to go first? Well, great question. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second with this deck? Actually, looking at majority of our attackers are... Uh, basically, we can actually 
uh, go second. I've, hopefully, you know, during the video we're gonna go second and first, so we'll see two different versions of uh, the deck. We're gonna see two uh, different playstyles that we have to uh, do. But let's go. Let's make. We play against Moist Chafon. Uh, all right, hello, my friend. Let's go. Let's. Uh, play our first game. Mulligan, not the best, the best turn, and starting with Onyx. Ouch. Okay. Um, Onyx start, I think, in any spread deck or in any deck that plays Onyx is super bad. Um, but the fact that we are facing Boswell deck is not that bad, fortunately. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to find Tated Liza and switch, maybe attack. Because let's be honest. Um, our psychic type Pokemon are going to be really good against uh, Boswell, so to definitely here we want to go straight for uh, Malamar. Okay, so do I put energy on Onyx? Uh, that is a great question. Um, let's start with Friend of Punishment. Uh, Nest Ball. And I think I want to go Oranguru. So I don't think I'm going to be able to put uh, <laughs> all four uh, energies here. But at the same time, uh, well, I can try. But let's get rid of Erika's Hospitality for a second. Let's draw. Um, actually, let's draw Tapu Lele. And I'm going to draw a uh, Lily from Tapu Lele. Since I know I'm going to be able to play more Shadow, um, there's no need of actually, uh, like, no, there's no reason to not not to play, uh, not to play a Lily right now during this turn one. So um, let's discard, and I think I'm just going to go for more Shadow. So much to my hand. I'm going to play Lily. We'll see what we're going to be able to play, and from there. And that's a brilliant turn, um, and a great turn of events. So definitely, right now, I don't need Shrine of Punishment, and I don't need another Ultra Ball, so I can go for, um, I can go for Coco. Right, so I can go for Coco, put, um, Energy on Coco, I know, I know there is a weakness, but just bear with me, uh, play more Shadow. Okay, we have NK. So we're kind of set. I I think we're okay. Um, he's not gonna target this type of Lele uh, super fast. I, you know, I think, I hope I have some time to actually get uh, more energy on uh, NK than Malamar and start attacking. Maybe you know, I can put it uh, somewhere else, but this is gonna be my uh, my idea right now. Of course, I could have played it completely differently. I, I could have done uh, that a lot better. And since he's gonna have Weevil, oh, this is gonna not. This is not gonna look good. Definitely, Onyx start is is a huge, huge, huge uh, downside, and it's a huge bummer. But okay, we can we can work this out. Um, my target right now kind of is uh, the Sneasel, actually. He really is uh, my target right now. Because Weevil can deal right now 150 damage. After Malamar, he'll be able to deal 200 damage. So that is a lot. And I don't want that. I really do not want that uh, to, to, to happen. Okay, so turn pass. Acrobite. Okay, that, that makes sense here. Another Lily, so I can discard the energy, that's good. Let's play here, and Lily. Okay, and we got a Malamar. Perfect. Acrobox, I can start, you know, I can start building my bench. As well, I can start, you know, uh, building my hand and, and building my uh, type of uh, gameplay right now. So, uh, let's go, let's put some energy on Malamar. Of course, you don't really want to attack with Marchado since you know the damage is not affected by weakness or resistance, which means um, 
he's only gonna deal 30 damage to Boswell and that is not good that is definitely not something you want to do um, okay so ultra ball it's definitely one of those games ah okay there we go return of punishment so that was my only altar of the moon Okay, Guzma. So is it is Guzma gonna be on Malamar? No, actually on Tapu Koko. Umbreon. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What is? Okay, 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 okay. That is a really interesting deck that we're facing. Um, okay, I'm gonna give. I don't have to give away Marchado. Even if I don't want to. I have energy to. Hmm. Cynthia, I would love to play Guzma on a Basel, but I did not have any energy to actually do that. Acrobike. Reverse Stretcher, definitely not good enough. Wait, so. F oh my goodness, so Malamars are prized. Uh oh. Uh oh. That is not looking good for the Malamar spread right here. Um, this star, right? Like, the star got me, and... Uh, oh, boy. And since, you know, since uh, I've lost my groove, you know, in those first few turns, I don't think in the matchup, basics base versus basics, uh, that I can actually uh, get back to the game, uh, to be quite honest. But we're gonna try, we're gonna play till the very end. So there we go, I had a switch, um, DCE, let's go with Ultra Ball, Coco only, oh. okay, Psychic Recharge uh, right onto And Necrozma, and hmm. As long as I would like the spread to, to, to do work right now, I don't think we can, we can win this game right now. <laughs> um, it is really hard to tell. Okay, Cynthia. With 15 cards left in the deck, yeah, this is. This is, gonna, this is gonna be over sooner than I thought. Um, yep, yeah. I have to concede. I have to concede this game. I'm sorry that that was. Oof, we whiffed the game. That was not a great game, which does not say good things about this deck. I know, but bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, any deck can have uh, a break. Any deck can break. Any deck can have a bad day, and hopefully, uh, we're gonna be have a better better hand against a gloomy, right? Gloomy. Uh, called the coin flip we won this time we're gonna go first and that's what I'm gonna choose this time we're gonna go first maybe this will uh, change uh, a few things and uh, okay mm. I don't know if I can start with Necrozma right now like, definitely I have the energy um, yeah you know what let's start with Necrozma why not Definitely no Shrine of Punishment, turn 1, but we have a Lily, so DC is gonna go on Necrozma, just in case I have to uh, retreat, but also, you know, if my opponent is playing GXs, um, then definitely, definitely, uh, I can uh, retreat, I can actually use a Black Ray a GX, but that's only one time, you know, you want to play against some nice GXs, you do not see them. Oh well. So if you, there we go, so... <laughs> Uh, we've won before the game has started. That is not great. Still not great. So let's go three times a charm. Third game. Let's go. And guys, if you want to you know, make this deck even better, um, be my guest. You know, submit like, your videos with the deck if you want to uh, check it out yourself. Because maybe this is going to be an idea uh, that will go towards you know some tournaments that will go and you'll take it to your local game stores. Even even you now post uh, rotation, well you know with this post rotation I would not you know jump to conclusions, but who knows right? Who uh, knows? So definitely, 
This is a fantastic turn right now, besides not having energy, but this is a great turn. Altar of the Moon, turn one. Um, and it is, oh, 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 I think our opponent just, you know, chose the bad day to be, right, yeah, to be a, <laughs> and a DCE. Uh, yeah, he chose a really bad day to be a, um, a Lost March player. Unfortunately for him, and fortunately for me, I believe I can see uh, myself in this game um, <clears throat> picking up a win, but I still have to be careful. I still, you know, can't be overconfident, even though I can clearly see that we have a fantastic hand, we have a fantastic turns, we can do it. So definitely now we have a turn one knockout on Hopip. But he might, you know, he might get something. He might go for uh, Marshadow still. So I might get Marshadowed. Let's remember, uh, Lost March currently plays at least two Marshadows. I've seen the version with three. I've seen the version even with four Marshadows, which was absurd. But there it was, right? There it was. So I think it's going to just go for Natus. Maybe a Molgas. Uh, oh, so okay. Uh, more Hapips. So, um, my idea right now is definitely I have to have more shadow during my turn. So, Altar of the Moon, Mysterious Treasure, I'm gonna go for uh, Inkai. I'm gonna go also right now with Mysterious Treasure for more shadow, so I'll be able to activate his ability. But before I'm gonna, you know, play him and activate his ability, I'm gonna play Lily to draw additional uh, cards. Let's hope, yeah, there we go. There is a Marshadow. I'm not playing Marshadow, but I know why I went for Marshadow. I know he has evolutions in his hand, so he can avoid me pretty fast. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is unexpected turn of events, um, which means I can actually go for another Tapu Koko. And yeah, we, we're going to play Marshadow, so definitely, you know, it's going to mess up his plans. Kind of can mess up mine, but there we go, Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, great. That is fantastic, I can uh, actually discard in the Necrozma, because in this matchup it's not going to be that good or that valid. And Malamar, so, and again, two Malamars prized. And a flying flip, so definitely a nice knockout here. Turn one knockout against uh, Lost March. I'm not proud of you know knocking out in the Lost March because again I don't think right now the deck is that good. But time will tell, right? Time will tell. And uh, yeah, he can get skip looms. So we're gonna see three skip looms, which means we're also gonna see uh, a lot of things and. A lost zone. And we're gonna see three uh, jump bluffs. So that's. Wait, let me count it. Two, four, six. Yeah. That might be a knockout right here <coughs> on a Coco. So that's what I like, you know. Never be overconfident. Never, you know, take a win um, as, as something that, you know, is gonna happen like that. Especially with certain decks, and when you're playing against certain decks, it can change uh, in a matter of, of, of seconds. Of course, I'm hoping right now there's no energy for him. And I think... Uh, I might be right. I think there's no energy <clears throat> that he can play on Jab Bluff. Uh, okay, now he's gathering, so definitely gonna have another Emolga. But how about... Okay, so no energy. Actually, no energy, but he's playing Lily, so I can play Shrine of Punishment. There we go. Um, something that's going to be a little bit hard for him to retreat. Or just play a little Cynthia. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to just play Cynthia. There's no need for me to, to uh, play anything else. Mm, I can prepare another Tapu Koko because uh, this is going to be my kind of a priority. And start putting some energy on the Malamars because Malamar is going to be an attacker uh, in this uh, deck. Also, what I can do is I can discard. Um, Actually, I can discard Cynthia, and I can go for Oranguru. So I'm going to have a constant flow of cards, right? They're going to come. If he's going to even, you know, field blow a uh, Shrine of Punishment, I'm still going to be able to uh, place another one. So the damage is going to be happening on Lele and also you know, on the whole band for him. 
if it comes to spread decks, I kind of prefer uh, Chandelier a little bit more, because Chandelier would just crush it here. Um, but a Malamar spread, also not a bad version of a deck, you know, definitely uh, interesting. So he is hoping for energy. That is his only way uh, to get it. We knew he did not have it last turn, but he has it now, so... Yeah. We have to prepare Malamar. Uh, I have to hope that I'm gonna, you know, get another Malamar from my prize cards and slowly, slowly, slowly start dealing uh, the damage that I want. Of course, kind of the problem uh, that I see is that <clears throat> even though I can, you know, I can deal damage, uh, which is 40 to this jump love, it's not gonna be enough to knock him out, but I can play Guzma on a Tapulele. So, first, because I'm skipping, um, he's gonna knock out Coco, right? Right. Uh, I'm gonna bring Malamar front, then I'm gonna play Guzma on a Lele with the Coco. So, he has to waste energy to retreat uh, a Lele, which will give me additional damage that I can deal uh, on all of his Pokemons, which means if I'm gonna have a Rescue Stretcher. Well, um, I can knock out his whole uh, bench at once after after playing the rescue stretcher. But first things first, we need to dig for the stretcher. So it's going to take some time, definitely, here. Uh, but we got Oranguru, 26 cards, let's dig. One card at a time, one card at a time. Shrine of, okay, I would say Shrine of Punishment, Mystery Treasure. Why not? Mm. Let me see. Okay, both are in the deck. So let's thin the deck, right? We want to thin it. So uh, I play Guzma this turn. So Lele is going to go into my hand. So next turn, I'm going to play Lele, find a supporter, play it. For now, 20 damage is okay. Because what's more important right now is that it came here. It came on a bench. And we are hitting the bench really, really hard. He has to waste energy to retreat. Maybe play Guzma on his own. And we got another Malamar. So definitely now we. We're making him waste stuff. And the thing is that in the race, when you have single prize cards race. Oh, this is interesting. So he played on the jump love over there. So does it mean that he has a way to actually retreat? Does he have a switch? Maybe Guzma in his hand? That might indicate this move. Um, so the race and the single prize cards. Why would he... Okay, I hope he has a switch, because now this is a really interesting uh, move uh, from him. Especially now if he's going to play Natu right now, this is going to be really interesting. Okay, so he just passed the turn, alright. Um, I mean, sure. So I wanted to play uh, Lele and go for Lily, but actually Lily came to me. So, Lily. Okay. <laughs> How much energy do I have in my discard pile? Uh, one. Okay, so flying flip definitely going down to uh, 60 damage on them. So if I'm gonna have rescue stretcher and I'm gonna find DCE, which uh, definitely there are two more in a deck, we're gonna have a three prize, a three prize turn. If I'm gonna be right, um, maybe you no, know, maybe he wants. Yeah, there we go. He's gonna retreat. He is going to retreat a Lele, but I want to hunt this Lele actually. So again, we have a Guzma. I want to hunt this Lele down. So that's what I'm gonna go for. And again, you know, as I was saying, when you're facing a single prize card deck, it is really hard to come back if you're one prize, especially two, three prizes. Um, away from your opponent. Uh, it's really, really hard. And I think this situa situation like that show, and uh, look at this. There we go. So now the question is, uh, Psychic Recharge. That's not the question it really is. Uh, do I want to play Guzma or do I want to play Lele? And actually, I want to play it safe, so I'm going to play it super safe. Malamar on Tapu Lele, because I know I can do this next turn. Like, this is, you know, clock for me that I can uh, knock out his whole bench and next turn and get those nice three prize cards. Um, or maybe he's going to put uh, a Molga front, right? So I can do this, but I want to, you know, 
I want to expand uh, my 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 uh, position here. I want to show him. Okay, listen. I have two more prize cards left. You you have four. My Pokemon are single prized. You're on a one turn clock basically, and with a Molga that's up front, you know, there's not a lot of room for you, uh, and there's not a lot of things that you can do actually. You know, because even if he's gonna play Natu. I'm still gonna take three prize cards next turn. If it's gonna leave Emolga, that's all four. And that's kind of the thing, right? You know, against single prize decks. The race, when you're behind, you're behind and you're gonna probably lose it. Like, your opponent has to break uh, for you not to, not to lose it. And, well, we have a Guzma, because normally I would not play it this way. Um, without a Guzma, I think I can take uh, all his prize cards like all his pokemon sorry so yeah during one turn we're gonna take all of his pokemons there we go ah he did not allow us to he did not allow us to actually pull this off uh i'm kind of sad about that but at the same time you can see the power of the deck uh, against the lost march so guys thank you so much uh, for watching this amazing amazing deck tech if you want to try the deck uh, out yourself on monday uh Next week, basically, I'm gonna be uh, in internationals, but the videos are still gonna be on the channel. Don't worry. Tomorrow, uh, my thoughts about uh, the rotation, why it happens, you know, what I think about that, what we are losing. Then again, a few videos with me testing. So definitely, we're gonna be testing some Charizard, Rayquaza, uh, that you know, speaking up some steam, and also uh, some Picarums, Jolteons, whatever you name it. We're gonna test it, uh, like a one-hour video with me testing those decks is going to be here on the channel so separate things not from uh, the stream right so um we're going to be recording them separately but guys thank you so much for watching. don't forget to subscribe to the channel don't forget to down there below you have a list for this deck so check out the deck and down there below you also have a five percent discount on any code you would purchase on professor oak and it's you know pre-release weekends so have a fantastic pre-release i'm raven thank you so much for watching Mwah. raven loves you bye <laughs>